Well, I've had a lot of people asking me to talk about this one, uh, so I guess I'm gonna take a request. Uh, spent over 20 years of my life taking requests in bar rooms for songs, so now I'm taking requests for topics, and uh, everyone's been asking what I think about The Undertaker uh, interviewing uh, Donald Trump on his podcast. And the reason people are asking me that question is because anyone that knows me at all or watched my channel for any amount of time knows that I am a huge fan of pro wrestling and that uh, I'm always drawing comparisons and showing the parallels between how Trump works his audience versus how the pro wrestling villain works theirs. And um, so, yeah, people have automatically been like, what do you think about that, man? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, first of all, I'd just like to say this. I've been watching wrestling my whole life. I don't ever remember being introduced to it. It was just always playing. And my favorite wrestling back in the day was uh, the NWA, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, and the Four Horsemen, the Midnight Express was my favorite tag team with Jim Cornette. Uh, thankfully, Jim Cornette's still on our side. But uh, I, um, I love the Road Warriors and Ivan and Nikita Koloff. That was my jam right there. And I remember when The Undertaker came on as Mean Mark and he was teamed up with uh, Dangerous Dan Spivey and they were the skyscrapers. Um, I remember that and I remember thinking he was a hell of a wrestler then. And then when I saw him in 1990 debut as The Undertaker, I was watching that when it happened and uh, I was like, wow, there's, that's Mean Mark. You know, I, I was that kind of fan as a kid. And um, whenever I'm having conversations about wrestling and someone asks me for my Mount Rushmore or asks me for who I consider to be the GOATs, I mean, Undertaker's name is always going to come up in the top five somewhere. I mean, I'm always going to be mentioning him because I thought character-wise he was the greatest character of all time. And I think he got better with age. I could sit here and sing his praises in the wrestling ring all day. I still think he had the most bone-chilling entrance of all time. Um, never got to see him live. Wished I had of, but... Um, yeah, I, I love the dude. And up until now, the only criticism I ever had of him was I thought he should have put over Bray Wyatt, who passed away at like 35 year old. I really thought that's the guy that should have ended the Undertaker's streak, and I thought that's the guy that should have went over him. But uh, that was the only criticism I had before he sat down to uh, interview Donald Trump. And then I sat and watched that as it happened. And the most disappointing takeaway that I have from it is that the Undertaker tried to normalize uh, Donald Trump. He tried to act like he, this was just a normal dude that he was talking with and like, well, you know, it's election time and then everybody picks their side and some people, Dave Batista likes, uh, you know, uh, Kamala and I like you. So it, that's kind of how he tried to play it off. And folks, I just don't believe this election is about Republican versus Democrat. I don't even feel like it's about politics. Uh, I feel like it's about saving American democracy from a madman who wants to be a dictator. And to sit there and try to normalize him now, I mean, Undertaker has went all this time and not talked politics. As a matter of fact, I listen to his podcast almost every day, Six Feet Under, and I've always really enjoyed it. <clears throat> he had one of his friends that he used to travel with and used to be in one of his uh, factions that he had. Uh, wrest his wrestling name was Midian. And um, he had him on his podcast and Midian said out loud at one point that he was the only liberal in their group. And uh, Undertaker was quick to jump in and go, we don't talk politics on here. We don't talk politics on this show. And uh, I've heard him say that several times that he didn't talk politics on his show. And then brings on Donald Trump. That's the guy he wants to bring on and platform. And I'm sitting there watching one of my childhood heroes platform a racist. I'm watching one of my childhood heroes platform a rapist. I'm watching one of my heroes platform an insurrectionist, platform someone who tried to turn over an election and take away my vote, sit there and platform a convicted felon. You know, and The Undertaker's a big dude on the military. He's always talking about, you know, his support of the military, and he's done a whole lot for him and entertained him over the years. And he had the most disrespectful man that he could have ever had uh, to the military on there. Uh, claims to be for law enforcement, but you can't be for law enforcement and be for Donald Trump if you support the people of January 6th and you think that they're patriots and hostages, you can't you can't have it both ways. There's no way you can't. I'm with Colin Allred on that when he said it to Ted Cruz. You can't support the J6 mob and you can't support law enforcement at the same time. It's impossible. So it was extremely disappointing to see him sit there and try to normalize it and be like, well, you know, I think people, at one point Undertaker said, I think people need to see this side of you. And I'm like, dude, we've already saw every side of him that we need to see. We've saw him for what he is. We've saw him for the kind of leader that he is. <clears throat> we know what kind of person he truly is. We saw what he did on January 6th. We have heard him say that he wants to sick the military on people that disagrees with him. And the undertaker at one point said, you know, I just want us to get back to a time when we can agree to disagree on politics and be cordial. Well, yeah, that would be great, but you've got the guy on there that would like to have me arrested. So I can't, I can't respect that. Um, and then 
uh, one of the biggest takeaways from it where I thought, oh, wait a minute, maybe Undertaker's actually about to take him to task. This, this might actually go good. The Undertaker says, you know, you met my daughter and uh, I would like to talk to you about my daughter for a minute because I think about her future and I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. He, he, he may be about to throw a curveball here. But no, he wanted to know what Donald Trump would do to preserve the integrity of women's sports. So yeah, he's worried about his daughter playing sports against a transgender. That, that's his big concern for her future. Not realizing that one day if she's laying bleeding out um, in a hospital room and can't get help, well, I mean, tough shit, dead man. What, I mean, what are we going to say now? That had to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard of him of being asked a person like that. I mean, you, you're talking about your daughter's future, and, and the, and then it, but, but they're worried about the integrity of women's sports. That's, that's where he took it. His one chance to maybe turn it around and ask a tough question, but that's where he went with it. And that told me everything that I need to know about that guy politically. Now, as far as the, the entertainer and as far as the character in wrestling, I, I'd still put him on my Mount Rushmore um, as far as his work in the ring. But man, that was disappointing. As someone who's been a fan my entire life, it was, it was disappointing. And there's people that say, well, it's his platform. He can do what he wants to. Absolutely, he can. It's his platform. He can say and do what he wants to do platform anybody he wants to. But I can tell you this much, you will never see me sitting and talking with a racist. You'll never see me sitting and talking with a rapist. You'll never see me sitting and talking with someone who tried to overthrow the government. Um, that's, that's, that's not, I've, I've, I don't know. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like the dude wouldn't pay attention. You know, it's like the whole thing just screamed, I'm kissing this guy's ass because he's Vince McMahon's buddy and I'm Vince McMahon's bitch. And so I'm going to sit here and kiss this dude's ass. That's just how it jumped off the page at me. Because there's no way that he's been paying attention. You couldn't pay attention and, and, and have Trump on there and try to normalize it in that manner. And the only thing I can figure is that uh, The Undertaker is a rich white dude who Donald Trump's presidency would never affect. But to those of us that it would affect and to the women out there that it would affect and his daughter's future that it will affect for sure, uh, you would think that he would have been paying closer attention and been more mindful. Because if I'm being brutally honest with you, he always came off like a smart, intelligent dude to me. I, I, I always thought that he was. And then, you know, I mean, when he's talking wrestling, yeah. But, you know, sitting there talking to uh, talking to uh, Trump about, you know, uh, Trump watching him fight CM Punk at WrestleMania 29. Like, oh, people need to see this side of you. Listen, I don't give a damn if the Undertaker, if Trump watched the Undertaker an elbow drop from CM Punk through a table at WrestleMania 29. I don't care. I don't care if he was in a hair versus hair match with Vince McMahon. I don't care if Stone Cold gave him the stunner. I, I don't care about any of that shit. I'm a wrestling fan, but leave that over there. I don't care about that. I don't care about that side of it. Because if, if Donald Trump was just some random dude that I walked up to in a bar, sat down on a, a bar stool, we started having a beer and wrestling came up, we could talk it all night long. But that's not who he is. That's not what he is. And to platform someone like that and normalize it, it was very disappointing. So uh, as I was sitting there watching it, the words to a Shooter Jennings song started going through my head where he says, your heroes turn out to be assholes and the light you're chasing in a tunnel is a train. <laughs> I, I, I sit there and watch that and I thought, well, there you go. But the only difference is the light in the tunnel that The Undertaker and Donald Trump is gonna see is Kamala Harris and Tim Walls coming straight at him. And uh, it's gonna be really sad that when this is all said and done, The Undertaker chimed in right at the last minute as Donald Trump was getting knocked out to say, oh yeah, me too. Yeah, I support this madness too. Um, but yeah, and something too, uh, in closing, the whole shut up and saying and celebrities should stay out of politics crowd, they were, they were so excited The Undertaker was talking to Trump. So uh, yeah, no consistency there, but uh, you know, um, your heat rolls turn out to be assholes. They just do. So, uh, anyway, I really appreciate you guys for, uh, for hanging here with me and supporting what it is that I do. If you haven't already, be sure and hit that subscribe button and you guys have a great one.